Well, for more, let's cross to Olomouc in the Czech Republic. Uh, act political scientist uh, Gurkan Bajik is a professor at uh, Palaki University. Uh, thank you for being with us here on France 24. Many pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. So, uh, what's the legacy of uh, Fatula Gulen? Well, uh, indeed, it was he was a very controversial figure who played a key role in the last, if I may say, four decades of Turkish history. Uh, the first thing I want to emphasize, his movement was unique, if I may use the term, because it was an Islamic movement, but the first Islamic movement, which was not Islamist. That's why the movement since the beginning has been kind of in a tension with other Islamist organizations. Uh, it's, uh, it's cultural perspective, mainly, which uh, split itself from other Islamist groups, made the movement a kind of popular organization, not only in Turkey, but in the whole other countries, even in Europe. But uh, in 2003 and four, the movement uh, suddenly began a kind of political cooperation with the ruling Islamist party. I would say it was a fatal mistake and which uh, has given way to what we have today. Yeah, and just to remind our viewers, uh, uh, his movement, what there was a, a group of schools, it was, uh, it, it was more than just a, sort of a political philosophy for a theology class. This was, uh, you yourself went to one of those schools. Yeah, uh, I didn't go to the schools, but uh, I, I'm, I, I'm knowledgeable about the movement. Uh, so mainly, in, 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 if I may use the typical literature of political science, Gulen uh, symbolized cultural Islam, which is different than political Islam, which usually comes up with a kind of radical organization along with a political party. In the case of Gulen, it was mainly symbolized by cultural organizations, civil society organizations, business organizations, and schools. And that's called, that, that's typically named as cultural Islam. But the problem is, as I said previously, that organization started cooperating with the Islamist party, which opened the gates for purging of seculars and so forth. And of course, then many, many seculars who used to be fun of the movement uh, transformed themselves into a critic of the movement. So uh, the problem about analyzing Gulen movement, we had a Gulen movement in philosophy, which is observed pre-2003 and post-2003, when the movement has become uh, let's say, an ally of er Erdogan movement. But as you mentioned in your, in, in your presentation, uh, in your news, when the movement has become critical of uh, the, 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 the ruling party, then uh, er Erdogan quickly, as usual, uh, listed him as the arch enemy of Turkey. How does this play out when you're a Turk living abroad? Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, mosques in places like France and Germany uh, they have their ties with, uh, with, with, with what's going on back home. Well, uh, the Turkish diaspora in Europe is very much divided, and I should say it's becoming like the Pakistani diaspora. So mostly mosques are under the control of other Islamic organizations and all Turkey's official Diyanet, the religious authority, which is under 100% uh, government control. The movement is not running mosques, unlike them. The, the movement is still uh, rep represented by schools or cultural centers. And I think uh, because of government pressure, I don't, uh, I don't think the movement has, has a a kind of even close interaction with other Muslim community. Uh, at least it will be problematic from intelligence perspective and security perspective. So the movement is isolated as well. But I was I that was, my, that that was kind of my next question. Is, can Gulenism outlast Fatula Gulen? Well, well, if I fail to speculate, I don't think the movement uh, will be able to replace him with another charismatic figure. Uh, it depends mostly on how the government is going to react, because as long as the government keeps the pressure on the movement, the movement should survive in a kind of solidarity movement, because we're talking about some thousands of people, mainly in Germany and US. So if they are not, let's say, if they keep facing this pressure, they should keep together. Otherwise, they cannot survive. So it it's mostly depends on how the government will react in the post vilan period. But on the other hand, Given what happened in the last 10 years, I should say that the movement's ability to expand or to exert influence has to a large extent been crippled. And Gurkan Bajik, a, a bit of forensics here. Uh, were Gulenists responsible for the 2016 coup attempt? A million dollar question, a million dollar question. I think uh, there are contending theories pure Erdoganist scenario, pure Gulenist scenario, 
As a political scientist, I would say my best, the truth should be somewhere in between. How so? Well, uh, well, the first point thing so far, we have not received a fair discussion on this on this debate. It's a very controversial issue. It's a very, if I may say, may use the term, dangerous. So there is no doubt that there are some Gulenists uh, involved in this process, but still, uh, we need more data. Uh, let's what the leaders, what are its political dimension? Because we are talking about the coup d'etat, and coups are not uh, unprecedented in Turkey. We know the coups from 1898. So we are not yet informed about uh, all about all actors. Let me say, let, let's say about the political dimension, for example. So at least we have seen some soldiers, uh, but I'm not sure that picture is enough. But uh, but but. Uh, I can't maybe speak in the capacity of a forensic expert, but there is no doubt some is involved in this. But I'm not sure if that involvement is enough to know. I was it's very usual in to... politics. We, we, need, we need some time. Need, need some, some time. Unfortunately, the connection is getting a little bit choppy there. Uh, with Olomouc in the Czech Republic, uh, Gukan Bajik, uh, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on uh, France uh, 24.